Well, good Wednesday evening to you once again, Shallow Church family. Thank you so much for being with us for our online services tonight. We so enjoyed being able to be back together this past Sunday morning for all of those who were with us. We uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting together with you. For all of those who were not with us, we absolutely missed you. And so we hope that you will be back soon if you were not with us this past Sunday. Thank the Lord for the privilege to spend time together as the family of God. And so we're excited about having more possibilities to do that uh, in the near future is what we are praying and believing for. We ask you to continue to pray for those of our Shiloh Church family. Please continue to lift up those in your prayers as God brings them to your mind. And also, please consult the prayer guide that you get, the prayer list. And uh, we so appreciate Sister Rose uh, taking care of that for us and giving us opportunities of prayer and keeping us informed of uh, specific prayer needs. We do ask you to specifically continue to pray for Brother Russ Hinesley and also for Brother Gordon Lucas. Please continue to lift up both of these brethren as they uh, continue on their recovery journey. We also ask you to continue to pray for others among our church family um, that are going through various situations um, some that are having various physical challenges and situations that the Lord knows all about. And we ask you to just please lift all of our Shiloh family up, as well as our extended family. We certainly need much prayer for our nation and uh, ask you to continue to pray for revival for our country. But we thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy and for the privilege to carry petitions to him in prayer. So I would invite you to join us now for a word of prayer before we get into our time in the Word tonight. Please pray with us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings. Thank you that we have the opportunity and the privilege to bring our petitions and requests to you. We ask you to reach down, Lord, in a special way and meet all the needs of our shallow church family. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory um, for meeting each one of those needs. We are so grateful for your providing healing where healing is needed, uh, uplifting where uplifting is needed, and also financial provision where finances are needed and job situations, Lord, that uh, may be needed. We thank you for the right jobs for our people. We also ask you to continue to minister to those that are battling the COVID-19 disease, especially those in the medical field and those on the frontline jobs. God, give them a special grace as they continue uh, to minister to people. And we'll give you the praise, the honor, the glory. We do pray for revival for our nation and revival for all of your churches. Thank you, Father, for the meeting of every need. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. If you have your Bibles uh, close by, I hope you do. I would invite you to turn with us to the writing of Psalm 34 and 14. To the writing of Psalm 34 and 14. And we find these instructions that is written there. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. I want to just share this thought with you tonight. Maintaining peace in days of trouble. Maintaining peace in days of trouble. Uh, may I just go ahead and say that that is easier said than done. We are living in some challenging times. There's an old song that came to my mind that many of you would know that the course of that song says this, Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. That chorus in that song is really a plea for peace. And it is true that peace, real peace and lasting peace that's available to be lasting peace, it does come down from above. On another occasion in scripture, John 14 and 27, the Lord gave us these words. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. But that peace that we get from our Savior, if we've truly repented of our sins and we have been born again, that peace that is available to us because of our being in Christ that we spoke about recently, um, it is under constant attack. Let's just be honest. It is under constant attack. 
by the things around us and by the enemy himself, that peace is under constant attack. So how do we maintain that peace? Especially in these last days that we are living in. I do believe we're in those last days. Those last days that we're living in that the Apostle Paul described in 2 Timothy 3 and 1 as perilous times. So we're living in the midst of perilous times. I think we would all agree with that. So how do we maintain that peace that is available to us from God? How do we maintain that if we're living in the midst of these perilous times? And there's there's multiple scriptures that we could go to that clearly indicate and let us know that even though that peace of God is given to us by Christ, he gives it to us, we have a part to play in the uh, maintaining and in the realization of that peace, the walking in that peace, the living in that peace. And I think that's very clear from uh, multiple passages of Scripture, one being the one that we've read for our text from Psalms. There's got to be some part of us that has to play a part in the uh, maintaining of that peace, uh, or else we would not be told to do the things that the psalmist has told us to do and the things we're told in other scriptures as well. It is possible to maintain that peaceful state of mind wherever we go and whatever we do, even in perilous times such as the day that we live. The question is how? We actually have to search for peace and work to maintain it according to what we're seeing in the scripture that we've read for our text from Psalms 34 and 14. As a matter of fact, our text verse in the New Living Translation actually says it this way, search for peace and work to maintain it. Our text verse, I believe, gives us some clues on how to accomplish that. In actuality, our text verse tells us four things to do to maintain our peace. So we want to look at those. We're talking about maintaining our peace, maintaining peace in days of trouble. First of all, we're told in our text to depart from evil. Now, this is clearly an admonishment, I believe, to live with the help of our Lord a sanctified and a separated life. The Bible is still very true. The Bible is still very clear that we are called to live differently if we have truly been born again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so this is a reminder, an admonishment from the psalmist, that a part of maintaining that peace is that we have to, with the help of our Lord, live that sanctified life, which means, <coughs> excuse me, putting away evil things and embracing godly things, putting away evil things and embracing godly things. It means to put away those things or habits that would take us down those roads that would disrupt our peace. I think all of us would agree that when we get off track or when we falter and fail and if we sin it definitely interrupts that peace because that conviction comes and we we feel that and we know that we have failed God. And it definitely interrupts that peace when that happens. And so in order to maintain that peace, we need to, with the help of Christ, continue to put away, continue to keep at bay, to put away those things are those habits that would take us down those wrong roads that would definitely disrupt our peace. We have to be willing to deny ourselves in a sense because many of the things of the flesh, if given into them, they certainly disrupt our peace. So that word there, depart from evil, it is an ongoing admonishment. We are to continue departing from evil because how I many of you know that no matter how much you do your best, only with the help of Christ, to live that sanctified life today, the next day those things still try to come after you to pull you down those wrong roads. We have to continue that departing 
from evil. It's an ongoing process in our life. The second thing that I believe we can see clearly in our text that helps us to maintain our peace in days of trouble is to do good. So first of all, depart from evil. Secondly, do good. It's, it's not enough just to depart from evil, which we must do, but then we must seek to do good. We must look for ways, I believe, as God directs us. We must study. We must, by choice, determine to be useful. It means making a conscious decision to live for a purpose that is bigger than we are. And that purpose, as a born-again, repented believer in Jesus Christ, that purpose should be, first and foremost, to impact as many people as we can with the gospel of Jesus Christ for the expanding and the upbuilding of his kingdom. That purpose of our life, to do good, that purpose, and to do good, should in, it should encompass, and first of all, that fir first purpose should be, to impact as many people as we can with the gospel of Jesus Christ for the expansion and the upbuilding of his kingdom. It is so true that I believe we must focus on what we have just said in having that focus. And I also believe it's true that if we have that focus, as we've just described, we will have less time to lapse into worry and fret which absolutely disrupts our peace, our focus. What did the Bible say on another occasion? Seek those things which are where? Seek those things which are above. So we have to have our focus. We have to have clarity of focus that we make a conscious decision to not only depart from evil, but also to do good. And a part of that to do good, it's not to try to do good to get to heaven because you'll never be able to do that. It's to do good, focusing on embracing the true key purpose of our life, which should be to share and impact as many people as we can with the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ for the expanding and the upbuilding of his kingdom. So maintaining peace in days of trouble, number one, we need to depart from evil. And secondly, we need to do good. Thirdly, our text tells us to seek peace. Seek peace. Now, I want us to consider doing this on both the practical and spiritual levels. And I hope you understand what I mean by that as we get into it. Seek peace. And we need to do this both on a practical and a spiritual level. First of all, let's think about the practical level. Seeking peace, I believe, on the practical level will include our learning to recognize what is stealing our peace. It will include our learning to recognize what is stealing our peace. Uh, one writer put it this way. He said, Satan uses the same tactics on everyone, but we each have particular issues. Example, one person may be disrupted and disturbed um, by trying to do two or three things at one time while some other person may thrive on trying to do multiple things at the same time, meaning that we're all different. Since we are all different, we must learn to know ourselves. Because let me tell you what I absolutely believe. Satan studies us carefully to know and so that he knows what pushes our buttons and what buttons to push. Let me say that again. Satan carefully studies us to know what buttons to push to disrupt our peace, to disturb us, and to get us to lapse into fret and to worry and other things. Another Bible writer stated this, writing about their own self. This is what they said. They said, I can endure things better when I'm not overly tired. So Satan waits to attack me until I am worn out. I learned by pursuing peace what Satan already knew about me. So now I try not to get overly tired because I know when I do, I am opening a door for him. 
Every one of us have things about us that are different. We all, I've talked about this before, there are some things that um, might be a some of the primary battles in my life that those things may not bother you as, as much and, and vice versa. There may be some things that are some of the key battles in your life that try to uh, pull you down, try to disrupt your peace, uh, try to get you um, off your focus of really being where you need to be with God, try to disrupt your walk with God, if I can put it that way. Uh, some things that might bother you more than me or bother me more than you, it plays into what we're talking about, that, that we're all different. But I can guarantee you this, Satan knows what my primary weaknesses are, what your primary weaknesses are, and he goes after them. Please hear me. Satan knows what mine or your primary weaknesses are, and he goes after them. Therefore, it is imperative that you and I learn what those primary weaknesses are for ourselves so that we can be on guard. The individual that understands that one of the ways that they become so weak spiritually is if they push themselves, push themselves, allow themselves to be overly tired. I know tiredness and weariness comes to all of us. Sometimes things we cannot help, but we do have to learn how to guard against those things. The Bible said, be not weary in well-doing for due season we shall reap. What? Well, we have to, we have to make a conscious decision to know how to try not to become overly weary and overly tired. If that's one of the things that you find yourself in a weakened state, just like that writer that wrote that about himself. Now for you, <clears throat> It may not be necessarily that, but I can guarantee you there's something, there's some things in your life, just as there's some things in my life, that if we don't guard against them, they make us more prone uh, to become weak and to become uh, less focused in our walk with God, which end up getting us off track in our focus with God, which disrupts our peace. And so we have to learn, learn what the peace stealers are, in your life so you can guard against them. Learn what the peace stealers are in your life so you can guard against them. <clears throat> Let me say this. For some of you, it might be watching the news too much. The news, 24-hour news cycle, uh, the uh, absolutely imbalanced media that we have in this day and hour I understand that all of us need to stay informed to a certain degree. I, I get that. But let me tell you something. I, I have come to believe that one of the things that can quickly try to really just steal my peace is if I get locked into too much of that news cycle. For you, maybe one of the things you need to do to help maintain your peace is to stop watching so much of the news and get back to studying the good news. But whatever those peace stealers are in your life, learn what they are so you can guard against them. That's on the practical side of the level, that practical level of, of that seeking peace. Then there's the spiritual level of seeking peace. Seek peace continually by seeking God. He is the one who really is our peace anyway. When our peace gets interrupted, this is what I believe. When our peace gets interrupted, it really means that we have allowed circumstances, situations, trials, tests, etc., to get our mind off God, to get our mind off who he is, and to get our mind off the promises that he has made to us if we're his children. So we must be determined to be continually looking above to our Father, who is the one who gives that peace, and by consistently looking not only to him, but looking into his word, continual Bible study and devotional time in his word. That's a part of seeking peace on that spiritual level. Isaiah 26 and 3 says this, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Keeping our mind on him, spiritually speaking, helps us to trust in him as we need to. 
when we allow the things of this world, the 24-hour news cycle, the challenges, the tests, the trials, when we get focused on, on the God um, of our, on the problems rather than our God, if I can put it that way, if we get our, pro, our focus on the problems rather than on our God, then it definitely disrupts our peace. So we need to remember that. And then the fourth thing is we are to pursue peace. What does our text say to both seek and pursue? And why does it say that? You might say, is it that the same thing? Well, the instruction to pursue, I believe, is for this reason. When you pursue something, you are intentionally going after it. When you pursue something, you are intentionally going after it. The psalmist is here, I believe, letting us know that we must be intentional in our maintaining our peace, that yes, that peace comes from above, but the enemy is constantly trying to disrupt it. He's constantly trying to disrupt that peace. Therefore, I think we have to, as one writer described, seek, inquire for, crave peace. He said we must pursue or go after it. And that's what I believe the psalmist is trying to tell us. That's why I believe that the psalmist says both to seek and pursue because pursuing something is making a conscious decision. I'm going after it. So when those times come that our peace has been disrupted, make a conscious decision to go after it afresh and anew. And even better, let's make that continuing conscious decision to continually go after peace. Uh, make the decision each day when we get up. My trust is in the Lord. Make the declaration. My trust is in the Lord. We can maintain our peace in days of trouble such as we live. And I believe it's possible. But I believe in order to do it, I think we've got to depart from evil. We've got to do good. We've got to seek peace. And we've got to pursue peace. With those things in place, doing those things we've talked about, I absolutely believe it will help us to maintain peace even in days of trouble. May God bless you. I, I hope that this will be helpful to you. We do live in some very challenging days, but God is bigger than all of our problems. Bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see, as one songwriter said. I believe that. May the good Lord bless you. I hope to see you at 10 a.m. Sunday morning in the Family Life Center. Um, as we will be continuing our series, Love Reigns, we'll be dealing with part three, which is Love Reigns Over Our Present. And so we want you to come and be a part of the services on Sunday. We love you. May the good Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. Have a great rest of the week. And the good Lord willing, we hope to see you live and in person on Sunday morning and back by way of our online service on Sunday night. I love you. We appreciate each and every one of you.